Hi, we're here with the reticulated giraffes at Animal Land to talk a little bit about evolution. Charles Darwin, the father of evolution, defines it as a change in species over time. Charles Darwin began developing his theory of evolution in 1831 at the age of just 21. He took a job on a ship called the HMS Beagle. The ship sailed South America and the South Pacific. His job was to be a naturalist, collecting specimens of plants and animals along the way. When they reached the Galapagos Islands, he began to notice the differences in plants and animals from one island to the next. He considered the possibility that species can change over time. For 22 years, he worked to find an explanation for how species could possibly change over time. He found that species change over time through a process called natural selection. The giraffe's neck is approximately 12 feet long, which also then means blood needs to be pumped 12 feet up to his head. Through evolution, his body develops structures to keep the blood from rushing to his head when he bends down to pick up some food, and there are valves in his blood vessels. These valves keep the blood from pooling in the top of his head because if that happened, the giraffe would pass out cold on the ground. So, through evolution, there was an adaptation that happened to make the blood flow properly in the giraffe's body. Another adaptation that happened through evolution is the size of the giraffe's heart. Because the giraffe has to pump the blood so far, his heart is two feet wide and his heart weighs about 25 pounds. This is the largest heart of any organism, any land organism. The giraffe, of all land animals, has the largest eyeball. It also has very, very long eyelashes and a large eyelid to cover that eyeball, and it's to serve as protection for when they're eating leaves in the very, very high tops of trees. Therefore, they won't get poked in the eye. Darwin noted the giraffe in his book called The Origin of Species to illustrate the mechanism of natural selection. His suggestion is consistent with Mendelian nature of heredity. The giraffes with fortuitously long necks will tend to leave more surviving offspring that inherit their genetic propensity for greater height. This is a slow process and it continued for countless generations and this can lead to a steady increase in neck length. So long as the local environment continues to favor animals with greater reach for those succulent topmost leaves of the trees. This brings up the issue of the missing link. Since Darwin saw the process of evolution as a slow and gradual process, you would expect to see a fossil record that shows layer upon layer of slightly different organisms, each slightly different from the previous one. The interesting thing is that we are not finding fossils of the in-between organisms that must have existed. For example, no fossils have been found of giraffes that would have had medium-sized necks. These are the missing links. However, opponents of Darwin's theory of evolution, specifically about the giraffes, say, if that was true, why isn't the whole giraffe's body extra long? Why aren't the legs longer than normal? Why is it just the neck? Modern theories of evolution today, they all they support Darwin, but they add a little extra. In studying giraffes, we found out that the male giraffe, who is always the bigger of the giraffes, fights for the attention of the female by doing something they call necking. And what necking is, is the giraffes smash their heads against each other causing the other giraffe to fall off balance and in some cases even become unconscious. You have to even think about a little bit of physics here. The giraffe with the longer neck would have the more force in the swing of his head, knocking his opponent down to the ground and causing him to pass out. Therefore, he has won the attention of the female, mates with the female, therefore those offspring have the longer neck. So they don't argue against Darwin's theory of evolution in terms of the giraffes, but they do back it up a little further and believe that it wasn't strictly the necessity for feeding that caused their necks to elongate, but it was also the fighting for the attention of the female and the giraffes with the longer necks 
won the attention of the female. They're the only organism that gives birth to babies that actually already possess horns. No other organism can do that. And their horns are used for fighting with the necking where they battle for the, the female giraffe's attention. And when I say attention, the ability to breed with her so that their traits are passed on. It's been determined by studying fossil records that the giraffe has an ancestor that looked a lot like a 10-foot deer. The rare okapi, confined to a small region within the Congo Basin and only discovered early this century, is a dead ringer for the rainforest ancestor of the giraffe. It has stripes on its legs, much like a zebra. It has a long neck, a lot like a giraffe, but nowhere near as long. And its face and its nose and its snout looks a little bit like a horse. It's a very unusual animal as is that it's unusual that a giraffe only has one living ancestor. Most organisms today have many, many living ancestors that can be tracked through DNA.